Hello my friends, we are in backyard and I just want to show you a little bit of behind the scene here. I'm waiting for um, Eddie the Chipunk to come and I can take some photos of him. And let me just show you what I'm working with. I'm sitting over here on the grass and here is my camera with my peanuts. And then over there I have set up two backgrounds. It's a little bit windy here, I hope you can hear me alright. Those are two backgrounds that are being making a uh, kitchen. And I put a little dollhouse uh, table with chairs and I put some peanuts on the table hoping that he will come and eat from my little table in the kitchen. So I'm going to show you a little bit closer look of the kitchen. And I guess if you're seeing this video, that means the chipmunk did come and I got some photos of him. I'll see you soon. Hello my friends, Eddie the Chipman did come and I got to take many many photos of him. I'm just gonna show you a really really quick kind of preview of him because he's so cute and I got to spend a lot of time on him and take lots of lots of photos. I think I took almost like, you know, more than a thousand photos. He was so friendly and he kept coming for more peanuts so I just could not help myself by taking photos of him. So let's pick a photo that we will edit today. I already kind of pre-selected a few of them. I apologize for the background noise, but we are building an addition and they are installing the wood floor. So let's see. I do like this image here because, you know, he just looks like he got cut and act. I like this one because he looks like he is sitting at a table eating his peanuts, but I don't like that the chair is kind of abstracting him. Then let's see. We have this one. Oh, I don't find that one so interesting. I kind of like that one just because he leans on the table. So that's interacting with my props. He was so courageous. He even jumped on my little table. And in fact, he knocked it over and broke one of the feet. I had to glue it back together. So let's see. I think I'm going to go for one of these images. I will take this image. So we'll go to develop. And before we move it into... Hold on. Before we move it into Lumina Neo... Let's just see, I took this image with my 200 to 600 millimeter lens at 200 millimeter. I used my Sony A1 uh, shutter speed, 1 320 of a second, wide open at f5.6 and ISO 500. ISO 500, it's a pretty low ISO for my Sony A1, uh, but I will still like to get rid of the noise. Even though there is not much noise, usually noise lives in the darker areas and the shadows. And this photo doesn't have a lot of dark areas. But with that being said, I still would like to take it into topaz the noise and get rid of the noise first before we do anything else. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know when I use topaz the noise, I always like to use standards and I use it in manual mode. I do not like the auto. And I just use it at 15 for remove noise and 15 for enhance sharpness and just click apply. And just like that, we have a noise free image. Now, one more thing I always like to do before I send it to Luminar Neo is to straighten my horizon. And for that, I'll go to develop and also I will crop it with this. So I'll go to crop tool. I want to get rid of this space over here where I did not have a background. So let's see, I'll put him on the rule of thirds something like that and what else I want to straighten the horizon so I'll go to this angle tool and I'll just click on this side and then click over here and there you go now we have a straightened horizon accept the changes and now we can move into our luminar neo to do our normal editing this is going to be a pretty easy straightforward edit nothing fancy nothing tricky and now that we are in Luminar Neo, I will go to Edits, and I will start to develop. First thing I need to do is increase exposure because this is really over underexposed. So there you go, something like that looks right. And then also the white balance seems a little bit off because the background looks a little bit blue, and I do not like that. So I'll go to Color and just give it a little bit of warm, not too much. I don't want to make it yellow. I'll just go like plus two, and that is plenty. Great. Let's see. Let's analyze our image. And one thing when you work with, um, here's a little piece of advice. One thing when you work with backgrounds like this, a printed background, 
I see this mistake all the time happening in food and product photography. People use printed backgrounds and they don't look at the direction of light. As you can see, the light is coming from the right side because we have the shadows onto the left side and that is not a real shadow that's obviously printed on the background. But when you set up your scene, like I did here, make sure your source of light, your sun in my case right now, has to be on the right side so it matches with the background. Because if you're setting up your scene and your sun is on your left side, but then on the background is printed with the shadows on the left side, it will just make no sense and it looks like a bad composite. Even though this is not a composite, just make sure you pay attention to your shadows. Great. Next thing I like to do, I like to work on this catch light. I want to enhance that because a good catch light can make a big difference. For that, I will go into black and white and to the develop and I will increase the white quite a bit, something like that. And then I will mask it with the brush, command plus to zoom in. And I will just add it to the sketch light and to the eye. Somebody asked me the other day why I never show sharpening the images into Luminar Neo. And that is because I usually don't like over sharpened images. My lens and my camera are very, very sharp. As you can see here, you can see every single hair. The eye is very sharp. And I don't feel like I need to sharpen it anymore because I don't like it when images are over sharpened and has that digital sharpness to them. In fact, for uh, landscapes and flower photography, a lot of the times I will take down the sharpness or the clarity to create a little bit more cinematic look. Let's see, command zero to fit the screen. And let's see what that catch light did. I'll go into my edit and I'll turn on and off. So you see that before and after, before and after. It just brings in a little bit of light into his eye. Now I will go to erase and I will take care of a few of these spots because he was a messy eater and I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? He's a chipmunk. We have to forgive him for that. You can see here where my chipmunk broke my uh, leg of my table and I used glue to glue it. I put too much glue, it was bubbling, it was, you know, dripping on my background. As you can see over here, I think that is a little bit of my super glue and it kind of ruined my background, but that's okay. It was worth it, he is my friend and I will forgive him for that. I am not going to clean every one of these uh, little spots on the background just because I could be here all day finicking with this and I don't want this tutorial to be two hours long. Here is a dust spot. I will just clean it with the erase tool. I could go and use the remove dust spots, but since I'm already in here, I'll just do it like this. I will leave some of that. Makes it look a little bit more organic. Don't need to remove every single crumb that he made. I have to redo the erase here. There you go. That looks better. This is a big spot, so we have to take care of that. And do a little bit more. These are just some tiny spots. We'll take a couple of them off, but we will leave the rest because, you know, it's okay. Command zero, we'll just pretend we have a messy kitchen. Now what I wanna do is add a little bit more saturation onto my friend Eddie the chipmunk. So for that, I will go to develop. I will go to saturation and increase saturation, something like that. And then on the masking, I'll go to brush and I'm just going to brush it over him. Just loosely brushed. I don't want to go on the background just because I don't want to oversaturate my background. There you go. Let's see. This is the before and after, before and after, and that looks better. Let's see what our whole image edit. This is the before and this is the after, before and after. And I think that looks great. Now I'm kind of done with my edits. So I can just click apply. As I said, this was just a simple edit. We did no tricks, no overlay, no blending modes. I'm sorry, this time it's just kind of a boring video. My main reason for showing you this video was not so much for the editing as for um, the use of an indoor background. I want you to see how you can use your backgrounds that you would normally use them indoor. Use them outdoors, get a little bit different uh, photos that most people do. 
Most people will just photograph this chipmunk right in the woods. Well, we were kind of in the woods in my backyard, but we did it a little bit different. So this is our before and this is after. Before and after. That's it for today, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.